All right. So it's an exciting time. We're going to be talking about buffers. Um, buffers have a lot of significance for a lot of reactions. A lot of reactions in chemistry occur in uh, aqueous buffered solutions, a lot of biology reactions, especially. And of course, there's the blood buffer and understanding buffers is important to for thinking about our bodies. So uh, what is a buffer? Well, uh, a buffer solution, a working definition is that a, it is a solution that uh, contains significant amounts of both a weak acid and its conjugate base, which is a conjugate weak base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. We know that's two ways of saying the same thing. And uh, if we were to think about a buffer that has acetic acid and acetate in it, and of course the acetate could be something from sodium acetate, um, but there are at least three ways to make a buffer. And we're gonna talk about all of these ways. That's how important buffers are. So the first way would be to do something like add 0 0.100 molar uh, acetic acid. and 0 0.100 molar sodium acetate. If you add these two in these concentrations to a solution, buffer. Now, excuse me, you could also start with 0 0.20 molar, 0 0.200 molar acetic acid and 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide. Because what would happen is, and we will show this, the 0 0.100 molar sodium hydroxide would react with the acetic acid to make acetate, sodium acetate, if you will. And then we could also start with 0 0.200 molar sodium acetate Oop. CH3 let's try that again let's try that a third time there we go uh, sodium acetate and 0 0.100 molar hydrochloric acid. And whereas the hydrochloric acid would react with the acetate to make acetic acid. So all three of these, and let's say this more specifically, so two and three make the same buffer as one. by reaction. So a reaction occurs to make the buffer in one. All right, so let's start by calculating the pH of a buffer. And this is straight up simple buffer. What is the pH of 250 milliliters of a buffer made from 0 0.100 molar acetic acid and 0 0.100 molar sodium acetate? And thank goodness I've set up the ice table for us um, and I've put in our initial concentrations. I've got our Ka value there as well. If we were to calculate a reaction quotient, we would see, which, which is our Qc, that since we have essentially zero here and we have nothing here because that's a liquid, that the reaction has to go towards products, okay? And that's why I'm gonna put minus x here plus x and plus x. And remember that approximately equal means uh, that even in pure water, there's 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven molarity hydronium ions. Uh, but that's gonna, again, turn out to be very small compared to the amount that we get from the reaction. So we're gonna treat it as zero. Although in the back of our heads, we're always thinking, what if our answer for x is close to 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven? then we're going to have to talk to me to figure something else to do or read the internet perhaps. 
Okay, so where were we? We've got um, Ka equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. That's going to be equal to our products over our reactants. And I almost did it again. We've got to take into account that we have a starting concentration here. So it's going to be x 0 0.100 ma plus x over 0 0.100 minus x. That's our setup. We saw this uh, in a previous unit. We're going to see it again uh, quite a bit here. Is that Kc, Ka is small, less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus fourth. That means we can ignore x when it's added to or subtracted from another number. Now on the product side, We've got two things that are exactly the same on the top and the bottom, so we can subtract them. We can, sorry, cancel them. And we get that x equals 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And that is our concentration of hydronium. And uh, that is from which we can find our pH because it is equal to minus the log of our hydronium, and we get 4.74. And a couple things we'll take from this. Uh, first off, we're going to define something called the pKa. And the pKa is the negative log of our Ka value. And our Ka value, which is actually equal to our pH in this case, is also 4.74 for acetic acid. So this pKa is the log negative log of Ka is something we will use quite a bit. And then we will also see that pKa equals pH when the concentration of our weak acid is equal to the concentration of our weak base. Uh, and I'm going to write conjugate weak base here, CWB. They're always going to be conjugates here. If they're not conjugates, we're not. We're going to have to do something to make it a buffer, most likely. Um, and I'll go back here. So um, I said that we have, for example, number two, we have a weak acid and a strong base. These are not conjugates to each other. That's a sign that a reaction of some sort has to happen, and we'll see this shortly. In order to use this and get a buffer, we will see that you have to have weak base, weak acid, conjugate weak base. And, and we will. So now let's derive an equation that will allow us to skip by stable problems. Woohoo! Um, and it's called the Henderson Hasselbauch equation. And it goes like this. So set up a nice table. And we're going to set this ice table up in terms of just HA, which is sort of a generic way of putting an acid, and it'll be a weak acid for us, plus H2O goes to hydronium plus A minus. Where A minus is any kind of generic um, anion for an acid. This has a Ka value. This is a molarity ice table. And we've got concentration of uh, HA initial here. We've got nothing for the H2O minus X. We've got approximately zero here. And we've got concentration of A minus initial. Doing our subtraction, doing our addition, in terms generic here, meaning general terms, 
and um, says uh, for any weak acid conjugate weak base, X is going to be small. That's based upon the fact that, um, let's say this, so, for any buffer, let's say, you can ignore X. Uh, when added to or subtracted from a bigger number. And again, this, we've hinted at it, and I just want to say explicitly this time, because you're starting with some product and some reactant in relatively large quantities, the X values you're going to get from this kind of situation, which is very different than if you had two zeros or an approximately zero and another zero uh, on the product side, which means that we're going to, so we're going to be able to ignore X. So then when I write this up, we've got Ka equals concentration of hydronium over concentration of A minus over concentration of HA, like so. And what we can then do, so we've already ignored our axes. We've said that this is going to be small and maybe zero. This is going to be small and zero. And so this is the expression that we get. And what we're now going to do is we're now going to solve this for uh, hydronium. And to do that, we have to bring this up and this down. And we get that hydronium concentration is going to be, sorry, I got a stray dot there. There we go. Is going to be, let's see, so we've got uh, Ka, we've got times Ha concentration over concentration of A minus. Now, uh, what we're going to do in one more color, we're going to have to go to orange now, is we're going to take the log of the whole thing. Actually, we're going to take the minus log, minus log. If we take the minus log of this equation, we get minus log of hydronium equals minus log of Ka. That's just that first part. You can split things up in the log, and when you do, they're added to each other. So this is going to be plus minus log of Ha over A minus. This is starting to get somewhere. Do we have any colors left? We're gonna to have to go back to black this time. When we do that, this is pH, which is the negative log of hydronium. This is pKa. And we're gonna do one thing. We're gonna take away the minus sign. We're gonna turn it into a plus there. And when we do, this part is gonna get flipped. So this is going to be plus log concentration of A minus over concentration of HA. And this is going to be the henderson hassel balk equation. The only difference that we're going to do is we're going to typically call the top part the conjugate weak base. And we're going to call the bottom part the weak acid. And this down here, it may not look like it but we will use it a lot. And when we know we have a buffer, we're going to just do it without doing all this uh, crazy stuff on the top. So fewer ice tables in our lives, more henderson hasselbalch bauch equations in our lives, true. And the only reason, the only thing we need to know before we use this, and it's called the HH equation for henderson hasselbalch bauch is because 
we have to, to use it, we have to know we have a buffer. So that's going to be something we're going to work on identifying. Let's use the henderson hasselbach equation. It says, what is the pH of 250 milliliters of a buffer made from 0 0.1? Wait a minute, this is the same problem we just did. Let's see if this still works. So, wait a minute. Significant concentration of uh, a weak base acid, significant concentration of a conjugate weak base. This is a buffer. No more ice tables, jump straight to the henderson hasselbalch equation. And all right, so we do have to look up for a weak acid, what its Ka value is. You will be on your exam having a list of Ka values. pKa, which we've already worked out for this, is 4.74 plus log concentration of our conjugate weak base, which is just 0 0.100. Also the same for our acid. This is going to be log of 1, which goes to 0, and we're left with 4.74. Once we know that we have a buffer. Um, and so this amount of work compares to this amount of work that we did previously. Um, and we'll stop there for the next video.